Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast as always. I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Very welcome to my summer paradise up here in northern Sweden, just outside of Örnsköldsvik. Now, what I wanted to do with this video, guys, is tell you a little bit about the trip that I took uh, from Barcelona via Frankfurt to Stockholm with my family. I want to give you some insights into how it's like to travel, especially with a family now um, after the, um, the COVID-19 lockdown. So stay tuned. Wind 310 at 1-6, Right guys, so um, the lockdown for Spanish people and people inside of the European Union is just starting to lift. This means that on kind of a limited basis people are starting to be able to travel and Spain have decided to allow people from basically all of the European countries into Spain from the 1st of July. But from the 20 2nd of June we were able to move out that seemed to be flying out of Spain as well and since I have a couple of weeks of planned annual leave in the beginning of July I thought I will take the chance to bring my family up here to this fantastic place which we have here in northern Sweden but in order to get here it meant that we would have to travel by air again and of course I am very, very used to traveling, but I didn't really know what was going to face me now after the lockdowns and with all of these new rules. So what we did was we started off very early. Okay, we gave ourselves a lot of time to get to the airport. We, um, the first flight was due out at 6.40 in the morning and we wanted to be there at least two hours before. Now, two hours might not be enough, guys, and I want to emphasize this. I think that the procedures that are being put in force, especially when there's going to be a lot of air traffic going, um, is going to take more time. So give yourself that extra little bit of time at the airport. Um, we got up at 2.30 in the morning in Girona, uh, got ourselves in the car, drove down. Um, I had fully expected to park in the staff car parking that I have available in, um, in Barcelona, because I operate from there sometimes. And, um, and when we got to Terminal 2, which where I normally park, it was completely sealed off. Right, it, there were obstacles to even enter into the, um, the, the terminal building. So. In Barcelona, what they've done is they've just stopped using one terminal and just concentrated on the main terminal one. Now, this is obviously something that I could have found out if I would have been looking for it, but it still came as a surprise to me. So we had to circle around, drive straight to terminal one instead, and we thought we'll stop and park at the long, long-term parking. But that's when the next surprise hit us, and that is no long-term parking was available. Um, there was just no buses running, so they didn't. They did, probably didn't have um, the buses disinfected or the staff in order to run it in a safe way. So there was no long-term parking available at all. So we had to drive to the short-term parking and park the car there. And I still don't know how much that's going to cost me when I get back after two weeks here in Sweden. So we parked up the car there, went into the terminal building, and. Um, so far everything was kind of normal but of course as you get into the terminal building um, you can see that everyone inside is wearing masks and this is going to be the norm the rule in most countries in the European Union for the foreseeable future every single one that's working and every one of the passengers need to uh, wear face masks this is of course maybe not to, to protect themselves but to protect others to slow down the possibility of infection rates Another thing that I noticed was that there was no people, right? This was the only the second day of, of traveling um, available in Spain, which meant there was very little flight, but there, it was eerily quiet, right? There was no people anywhere. Um, we got to the check-in desks and uh, here is where I really noticed how happy the workers were to start working again. Because remember, there hasn't been almost any flights for about four months. So the people in the check-in counters, everyone working in the stores, shopping, security, everyone was just so helpful and so happy. But also very strict in the rules that are being applied. So you can see these uh, plastic barriers everywhere. Um, you, you'll see social distancing rules and markings of where to stand and people have to really, really respect these. But apart from that, pretty much normal. 
When we got up to security though, there were some new procedures. And the new procedures in security is that they just slow down the entrance of people going in to do the security checks. Now, in our case, that wasn't really a problem because there were so little people. But you can clearly see how in a few weeks, when there's more flights and more people traveling, this is going to slow down the security work quite a bit. So you can expect some, some further delays in security um, going forward, so take your time. So we got through security, um, got into the, the uh, departure terminal and here's where we notice the next thing and that is there are no baggage trolleys anymore, right? Obviously they, they have a problem keeping the baggage trolleys sanitized and cleaned all the time so they've solved that by just taking them away. That means that you don't want to be carrying around really heavy hand luggage. So we were, for example, carrying some quite heavy stuff, like our cooking robots that we were bringing up to our summer house, um, thinking that we could put it on a trolley, but we couldn't. So we just had to haul that around through the terminal building. Not a big issue, but it's something that's worth thinking about. Another thing that we noticed was that there was no shops open. Um, this was a very early departure, so it could have been partly because of that. But I did get the feeling that there was a lot of shops that was just going to keep closed until there's more traffic and more passenger volumes. Um, there was also very few cafes open where you can get something to eat. And that's going to be important later on. But you have available these kind of um, machines to buy drinks, for example, water and sandwiches and chips and things like that. So uh, we got to our boarding gate. At uh, the boarding gate there's also very strict social distancing, markings of where to stand and they were boarding people in groups. So they would call up groups depending on where you're sitting in the aircraft and then you would go with you know, a very long line um, in time by time. They stopped the um, getting people through the gate whenever they saw that there was a possibility of people queuing up to enter the aircraft, waited to, to, you know, basically to limit the chance of people getting packed together as much as possible. So we got in, boarded the aircraft, was greeted by very happy uh, cabin crew, was really happy to be back to work again. Um, obviously it's hard to see them smile behind the masks, but you do know that they're smiling because you see it on them. Um, they were handing out sanitize, sanitizing wipes. Um, this is going to be different between different airlines, I think. We were traveling with Lufthansa and um, yeah, so we got san sanitation wipes so we could kind of, you know, wipe down the um, areas around us where we were seated and uh, they had blocked up the middle seat on each seat row. Now I've done a video about social distancing in aircraft showing that there's no way that you can keep the kind of social distance that's needed inside of an aircraft uh, but I think that some airlines will try to do this basically in a flight where they can do it um, and Lufthansa seems to be doing that because on the first flight we had the middle seat blocked but on the second flight we did with Lufthansa, that was fully booked, uh, so there was no seat blocked off. So it, it seems to be on a kind of, if it works, we do it basis. Um, on board, all of the cabin crew obviously wearing masks, protective equipment. There were PAs um, highlighting the fact that you need to, to keep the masks on throughout the flight. And also there's some slight differences to the new safety PAs, which means, for example, if you have a, a, a drop of cabin pressure, you now need to remember to remove your face mask before you put your, your um, crew oxygen mask on, things like that. Um, Throughout it felt really thought through, like the procedures that were being applied were really good and it, it really felt like, like they were taking this seriously and doing their absolute best to make it as safe as possible for everyone on board. So we taxied out, took off and in flight everything was normal. I of course loved to be back in the air again even if it was as a passenger but just the feeling of being flying again and going around and moving again was so so nice. Um, some differences was that there was no in-flight bar service. So they, the cabin crew came out and they had an out water to everyone, um, but you couldn't buy anything on board. So this is probably my, my next tip to you guys. If you are going to be traveling in these next couple of months after this, um, this lockdown, make sure that you take food and snacks with you because you will not be able to buy it on board um, and if you're not it might take a long time before you can go and get something to eat again so take something with you also they didn't do any gas service so they didn't go and pick up trash like they normally do so if you are taking 
you know, bags of chips or stuff with you, make sure that you have a plastic bag or something with you to, to take your own trash as you leave the aircraft. Then we landed in Frankfurt, taxied in. Uh, when we disembarked, some new procedures. Uh, now they were disembarking using five rows at a time. So the first five seat rows were disembarked first. Once they were out, then they started with the, the next five rows and then went through the aircraft like that. Now this is unlikely that you're gonna see in all air, uh, airlines um, because it's going to slow down the disembarkation and the general turnaround quite a bit, but it worked quite well here. Um, got into the terminal building in Frankfurt once again very few people inside of Frankfurt, everyone wearing face masks, a lot of PAs telling people how important it is to wear face masks. You could see signs of the pandemic everywhere. For example, um, when you have these seats in the terminal building, every second seat was blocked off to make sure that people don't sit close to each other. Um, there was loads of cleaning going on. So we, me and my family, we sat down, we had, a, we had to wait about five hours, we sat down in a kind of eating area where we could eat our snacks and it was next to a toilet and I think they were cleaning that toilet every 10 minutes like there was so much cleaning going on which is really reassuring to see really other signs obviously is if you look out onto the apron you could see that all of the short to medium wall aircraft like the Airbus 320s and the 737s they were moving but the big uh, aircraft were not so the 747s and the the Airbus 380s they were all mothballed you can see that the engines were covered with plastic which is really sad and I, I really hope to see those majestic aircraft back in the air soon again so we waited there for five hours um, just observing once again very little shops available in the terminal building now this is midday so yeah I do think that there are quite a few of them that's keeping closed, closed. Um, and then it was time to board again same kind of procedures like I said when we got into the aircraft this flight was obviously completely fully booked so there was no blocked off seats on this one um, just some water sanitary wipes and uh, and then we made our way towards Sweden uh, when we got into Sweden the only real difference that I noticed uh, procedure was was that we had to go through passport control now normally if you do a flight between Germany and Sweden they're both members of the European Union there's no passport checks necessary however with this pandemic there is still uh, restrictions on passengers that's coming from other countries with other passports in some cases there might be quarantine rules in other cases you might not even be able to enter the country depending on what kind of rules are enforced and that's probably why they had um, these passport controls so we went through the passport control and obviously once you're through passport control then you enter into Sweden which has famously very very relaxed uh, rules regarding to this pandemic that's going on um, suddenly no one was wearing masks anymore but I have to say though even though Sweden is getting a lot of slack for their relaxed attitude um, once you're in Sweden you realize that there's quite a lot of um, of social distancing going on people are taking this seriously people are spacing out inside of supermarkets and they're they're avoiding crowded places and stuff like that so they do take it seriously it's just that no one is wearing any masks and, and there's no real enforcement but but all in all what I really wanted to finish off with saying is that uh, even though there was some new procedures and some procedures that might take a little bit more time uh, it did felt really really safe and really thought through and I thoroughly enjoyed being back traveling again so I think that if you want to go out traveling inside of European Union um, again within the next couple of months you should feel safe as you're doing so and just take that extra little bit of time take that little food with you and I think that you are going to enjoy getting back to some kind of normality because this is what we're all about you know going out going to places like this now here in Sweden I feel completely safe because where I am right now in northern Sweden there's less than one person per square kilometer which is nice uh, and we're feeling perfectly safe for our return journey back to Spain again in a, in a few weeks that's it guys I am going to be enjoying my stay here in Sweden for the next few weeks I won't be doing any YouTube videos during that time uh, I'll be back with more fresh great material back on the channel in, towards the end of July and until then I hope that you're all staying safe and that you have an absolutely fantastic time take care of yourself and I'll see you soon bye bye Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then,
check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.